Brett, an inebriated good evening to you, sir. I was wondering if I might uh, bum a smoke off of you. I appreciate it. I left my cigarettes uh, in the machine back there. <laughs> you mind if I sit down? Well, it's busy tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Man, it is a foggy, foggy night. And cold, too. <laughs> Colder than the ticket taker's smile at the Ivar Theater on a Saturday night. <clears throat> hmm? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not a driver. I, I come to these truck stops, you know, for the ambiance and the fine dining experience. You know, I've always considered myself actually a kind of a, a pioneer of the palate. Restaurant tour, if you will. I have wine, dined, sipped, and sucked in some of the most demonstrably Bima epitomable bistros on the highways and byways all over these continental United States. Yeah, I have had strange looking patty melts at Love's in Fort Bend. I had a very dangerous, actually very violent, veal cutlet at the Pilot Travel Center in Amarillo. Well, actually, what you get is a, a, a breaded Salisbury steak in a shake and bake and topped with a provocative sauce of Velveeta, and half and half, you know, smothered with Campbell's tomato soup. <laughs> See, I kind of, I ordered the veal cutlet. Uh, here's what happened. And, and I get the veal, and Christ, the, the damn thing jumped off the plate. Walked down the end of the counter and tried to beat the shit out of my cup of coffee. Coffee just, <laughs> coffee just wasn't strong enough to defend itself, you know. Oh, boy. I tell you. I, you know, one of the things I've not, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but every one of these places has the same waitress working at them. You know, she's either named, oh, I don't know, she's either named Irene or Vera. She's always wearing those rhinestone glasses with the little pearl things uh, clipped on her sweater. Like, uh, excuse me, excuse me, miss. Yeah, hey, uh, hi. W what's your name? Irene. Well, uh, um, Irene. Could I get a cup of coffee, please? Yeah, black, black. Yeah. Thank you, darling. See, I told you. Yeah, speaking of coffee, that reminds me. I was out on the East Coast. This goes back a couple of years. I was, I was, uh, I was trying to make a make a buck. Things didn't work out. I was down on my luck. I got tired of roaming and bumming around, so I started thumbing a ride, you know, back to my old hometown. Made a lot of miles those first few days. I, I figured I'd be home in maybe a week or so if my luck held out that way. But the third night, the third night I got stranded, way out of town, at a, at a cold, lonely crossroads. And the rain was just pouring down. And I was hungry and freezing, and I done caught a chill. And that's when the lights of a big semi just topped the hill. Lord, you should have seen me smile when I heard those air brakes come on. And I climbed up into that cab where I knew it'd be nice and warm. And at the wheel, well, at the wheel was a big man. He must have been 6'1 and weighed 310. He stuck out his hand and he said with a grin, Big Joe's the name. And I told him mine and he said, this here rig is called Phantom 309. I asked him, I said, why do you call your rig such a name? He said, son, this old Mac could put them all to shame. He said, well, there ain't a driver or a rig running any line. He ain't seen nothing but the taillights from Phantom 309. I remember, man, that dashboard, it, it lit up like a pinball machine. I mean, this was uh, some serious semi-truck. It was lean, mean, and nothing in between. Well, we, we rode and talked and told our stories. I think I smoked up all his viceroys. He was pushing her ahead, jamming ten forward gears as those white lines on the highway just up and disappeared. 
No, we just, we just drove on all through the night. That's when the lights of a truck stop came into sight. He said, son, I'm sorry, but uh, this is as far as you go, because I got to make a turn just up the road. Well, he tossed me a dime as he dropped her in low and said, have yourself a cup of coffee on old Big Joe. And I tell you what, man, when Joe and his rig roared out into the night and nothing flat, he was clean out of sight. Well, I went inside and ordered me up a cup. I told the waiter, Big Joe's setting me up. Just like that, like you could hear a pin drop. It got deathly quiet. And the waiter's face turned kind of pale and white. Well, what's wrong, I said with a halfway grin. He said, no, nothing, nothing. It just happens every now and then. Every driver in here knows Big Joe. But son, let me tell you what happened about 10 years ago. At the crossroads where you flagged him down, there was a busload of kids just coming from town. They were right in the middle of that road when Big Joe topped the hill. It could have been a slaughter, but Joe turned his wheel. Well, Joe lost control and jackknifed and went into a skid. Some folks say he gave his life to save that bunch of kids. And there at that crossroads, well, that was the end of the line. The end of the line for Big Joe and Phantom 309. But every now and then, when the moon's holding water, some hitchhiker will come by, and like you, Big Joe will give him a ride. Here, he said, have another cup of coffee and Forget about that dime. I want you to keep it as a souvenir. From Big Joe, Phantom 309. Well, those days are long gone. And I guess I better be uh, moving on. Time to make like a tree and leave. <laughs> make like a hockey player. Get the puck out of here. Huh? Hey, listen, thank you for the smoke and... Uh, let me tug on your coat. Uh, here, let, 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 let me take care of that coffee for you. No, 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 I insist. I insist. It's the least I can do. You were kind enough to put up with me. <laughs> Man, if that dime could talk, just think of the stories it could tell. Well, you take care of yourself, buddy, and you stay well. We'll catch you on the flip-flop. See you later. Good night, Irene.